All right, then the big story at this hour, the Kane India and Vedanta boards have waved the green flag for that big merger. The ratio will be one is to one, which means that every Kane uh, shareholder will get one Vedanta share. Not just that, in a bit to sweeten the deal, they'll also get preferential allotment of shares of the face value of rupees 10 per share. Joining us uh, from the venue of the press meet is Sajid Mangat, as well as Nainthara Rai. Also joining us uh, in our studios, in fact, we have uh, Amit Andan as well as uh, we have Mr. Gupta as well. But first, uh, let's uh, go across. Uh, uh, here is uh, Kane India CFO Sudhir Mathur talking exclusively to, to Nainthara Rai as well as Sajid just a short while back. Let's listen. Well, the match has been fixed by, you know, appointed globally acclaimed uh, valuers, Price 4000, Grant Thornton, and we had Merrill Lynch and JM supporting us on the fairness opinion. So the match has really come from them. So it's one for one equity share. Uh, in addition to that, uh, uh, Kane shareholders get a preference share. Mm. Uh, valued at 10 rupees, which is redeemable after 18 months of issuance. We will issue this on when the merger gets affected and it will be listed on NYSE. Uh, All the preference shares will be listed well, on NYSE. NYSE? Yes. In addition to that, we will provide liquidity through a third party uh, to be able to you know, cash the preference shares uh, one month after uh, issuance. All right, then that was uh, the management uh, detailing and in fact giving us uh, more details on this big major uh, mega merger. But uh, Sajid is standing by. He's been where the action really was. Sajid, take us through all the details. Uh, you, you heard the press uh, briefing uh, which was done by the CEOs of both the companies, Kane India and Vedanta Limited. Uh, as, we, uh, as we announced earlier, uh, the the FAP ratio is 1 is to 1, uh, plus there is a sweetener in form of a redeemable preference share which will be listed on the NYSE. Uh, the tenure of the uh, RPS uh, would be uh, 18 months and it will have a coupon rate of 7.5%, uh, which means uh, you will be, uh, the Kane, uh, uh, Vedanta Limited will be uh, uh, paying out up to the tune of nearly 836 crores uh, up to uh, within 18 months uh, period uh, once, uh, once this RPS is being issued to the shareholders. Of of uh, Vedanta, uh, Vedanta and uh, 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 Kane India minority shareholders. Uh, the other thing which uh, which is very important is the fact that the, the management did speak about the fact that the Kane India share will have access to the stable cash flows. Uh, that's an argument which uh, which was very unconvincing, uh, considering the fact that some of the biz cash uh, flow businesses are uh, are based out of Indus and Zinc and uh, Balco, and these two companies uh, are dividend paying. They haven't been paying huge dividend to ensure that there's huge cash flows coming into the uh, books of Vedanta Limited. So that would be a, uh, you know, a big of a sour thing uh, point uh, for the Kane India shareholders because that uh, uh, that will not go well uh, with the Kane India That argument doesn't go well with the Kane India shareholders that uh, they will get access to, uh, 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 to the stable cash flows. The second part is that the deal has been done at a time when the food prices are much lower uh, and so the valuation given to Kane India is also much lower. Remember, the, uh, the market cap of Kane India has come down from $12 billion to $5 billion, uh, and this deal has been done at, uh, at a lower end because of the uh, crude prices. Uh, Kane India, on the, on the other hand, in the last uh, few months, have reduced the capex from a billion dollar last year to, a half, to half a billion dollar for uh, the current fiscal, uh, and uh, that would be something of a concern for the share, uh, minority shareholders. Remember, you have two big uh, minority shareholders there, the Kane Energy PLC, which has nearly a 9.8% stake in the company and uh, LIC which holds 9.1% stake in the company. Now it would be great uh, It would be great to know what LIC has to say about uh, the entire transaction because right. they would be key to the uh, approval of the merger. Right. Uh, the entire merger right. process will go through a slew of regulators. Uh, the biggest one would be the personal ballot right. where you will need to have a majority right, of minority shareholders voting in favor of the merger. And here are the key highlights from the management's press conference. No, I, I don't think we've done sweeteners on a bilateral basis for anybody and neither will we ever do it. As Tom mentioned, uh, Kane PLC is a minority shareholders and they will exercise their rights. They will, I mean, they have the right to exercise their rights in, in, uh, in accordance to their beliefs and their board. Uh, as far as the tax issue is concerned, yes, their, their shareholding in uh, Kane India is frozen and, uh, you know, the economic rights are separate from voting rights and Kane PLC has a right to vote. 
and as far as the tax authorities are concerned, they get substituted, the, the economic rights get substituted on the same exchange ratio, so tax authorities, our belief is, should not have an issue at all with that. Tom, uh, Tom and Mayank, uh, I have... Sorry, sorry. One, one question at a time, please. I have a question for both of you, Tom and Mayank. Uh, you've been emphasizing the fact that Kane will have access to stable cash flows. Now, please, can you explain to me how they will have uh, access to table stable cash flows since SZL cash flows, cash can't come to Vedanta and Balco cash can't come to Vedanta. So how is that access to stable cash flow coming from? Well, look, I, I think, first of all, these are businesses that we would be seeing all generating positive cash flows after CapEx. Now, we're, we're, we're in the business of ramping up our aluminum business now. We've got to get the, the, the iron ore business back up and running after the frozen production in Goa. But we'd expect cash flows coming from all those businesses. And again, I think as, as, as Maya had said, uh, that the business of Kane has been generating positive cash flow after CapEx. You've got exciting projects with Balmer Hill, which you've got some technical work to do. We, we do like the deep Raj gas project. Of course, the government's going to have a say in that because they, we require requisite approvals, both for pipeline access, et cetera. But we want to be investing in those. So I think we're well no, but positioned. But you didn't answer the question. How is Cain getting access to stable cash flows? Uh, over the long term, when you see the kind of volatility that any of these individual metals have had, it will be buffering okay. out the, up, the ups and downs. So the cash flow from SZL and Balco, you're saying uh, they will form the stable cash flow for Kane, Kane India? Is that what you're saying? Or vice versa. But you're not allowed to transfer the cash from the books of Balco and SZL. And that's uh, the biggest challenge which you're facing. Those, those businesses have dividends. Tom, yeah. I think... Yeah. Uh, so yeah. maybe... Yeah. The cash flow from aluminum business, iron ore business, and power business is sitting in Vedanta Limited. So that is a buffer. Not from Jin and Balco is only to wipe of dividend. So how much of cash flow you are expecting from those businesses? You have the balance sheet and the projections. Because the, the cash market. in books of Vedanta Limited stand alone is around 8 right? You don't need cash in hand. You need regular cash flow for investment. And, and we have regular cash flow, free cash flow. Yeah, maybe I'd like, I'd, like, I'd like our CFO, uh, Mr. Jalen, to explain, please. Yeah, thanks, Tom. So basically, if you just try to look at in the low commodity price scenario, where you have seen that the oil prices have come down from $100 plus to $50, the cash generation from oil business has come down. And we have got other assets, and which is what is going when we provide that, yes, it will have a financial flexibility and robust cash flow to deal with on the capital allocation. We have got the well-invested aluminum assets, and in the aluminum assets, that is where we see that a lot of growth is going to come. The second is we have got uh, highly uh, uh, cash-generative zinc assets wherein our low uh, cost of production is very low and uh, zinc prices are uh, supposed to be quite robust and this is in the low commodity prices. Zinc prices are the one which is holding on and it is likely to be more robust so that is going to generate better uh, capex. Although it is going to be uh, in a separate listed company but they, we expect a high level of dividend from uh, that company. And the third is we are having a copper business. In the copper business again it's a hugely cash generative as of now, as of now in view of good TCRCs and good asset uh, realizations. And uh, third is iron ore business. As of now, it is not very remunerative because of the uh, low, uh, low iron ore prices, but it is likely to step up. And now, since there were no cash flows in past couple of years, it was a negative cash flow. And now, with the uh, mining getting started during the year, it is likely to contribute very positively in the uh, cash flow side. Thank you. Next question, please. Hi, sir. Right, right, here, right here. here. Will you, will you, will you uh, will the ONGC will have the preemption right because they have uh, stake in Rajasthan block and because it's not only the name change, the balance sheet will also change. The second question, Ministry is not happy with the investment in the Rajasthan block as the price of crude has come down and the production has already come down. And the third question, you have invited bids for exporting oil provided you are not allowed to that. Is this only a price discovery or you are serious to export? Can I just say that these questions, I'd like, I'd like maybe Maya can sit here to answer them, but these questions are actually independent of, of the merger. This is basically the business of running oil and gas, but leave it yeah. with these businesses. Uh, leave it. You know, as far as the crude uh, export is concerned, it's primarily price discovery. You know, uh, the bottom line is every crude producer I know of in the world wants 
a not only a market price, but a higher price. That's quite natural. And <clears throat> where we are today, we have a limited uh, supply of customers, and our uh, efforts at export market are primarily geared to price discovery. What was your middle question? I, uh, you mentioned that you asked three questions. Yeah, the second was the ONGC has rights. Yeah. Uh, so will it yes. trigger because it's not only name change, balance sheet will also change, so they may have right of first refusal. Look, ONGC has been our most progressive partner. And, you know, we really enjoy that relationship. It's very open, it's very transparent, and they've been supportive in everything we have done, whether, uh, whether Kane or since the block, whether it transferred to, uh, from Shell to Kane, from Kane to Vedanta. And, uh, you know, they have been very supportive of this, and this is not even a change of control, you know, which, uh, so I, I think we should be clear that preemption rights in anything are usually ch triggered by change in control, and uh, Vedanta has been the principal shareholder of Care India, have you and therefore the rights. Have you informed the NGC? Well, we've informed all our uh, key stakeholders subsequent to us, uh, subsequent to us, the, both the companies issuing notices to the stock exchange. And the third Thank question, the, the investment climate, the investment in the Rajasthan block has come down significantly because the production is also 1.7 lakh barrel per day and the crude price is coming down. So the profitability is definitely impacted. The Q4 result has shown the same. The ministry is also not happy with the investment progress in the Rajasthan block. What will you say? Uh, you know, I wouldn't say the ministry is not happy. Ministry understands that at the end of the day, the economic return has to be there. And I'm very proud of the current people, our engineers and technologists, who are using world-class technology uh, for not just EOR, but for fracking. So this is some of the work that we're doing is the best in Asia in terms of the longest frack and so on. So what I can assure you is uh, we are investigating very assertively and we have full intention to yes invest heavily increase production but it's also important we have the returns there so it's important we do it right and uh, I would say uh, we are very very committed to be a very large part of India's energy story as well that story that fundamental goal is unchanged last question Thank you. Do you see any hurdle Pleasure. from government side to get approvals from DGS from government side do you see any hurdle I, I didn't even... Yeah, yeah sorry, you talked to, people talked over each other. Can you re repeat Do you that see question? any hurdle from the government to side to get approval to this merger? Corporate side to get approval from the government? Asking, no, no, we see don't any see any uh, issues at all. It's, it's a simple thing. It, you know, nothing is really changing. Uh, you know, as far as the government and uh, the DGH or any other body is concerned. So it's pretty much life as usual.